Hey everybody, this is Geo Joe here today with a quick overview tutorial video of the GeoVision VMS software. GeoVision for years has offered a free 32 channel VMS software that requires no licensing for GeoVision cameras. This is still true today and we have two versions of our VMS software. The current versions are the VMS 17 platform, which is the free option. And then we now have the VMS 18 software, which is a paid analytics version. And that allows you to be able to record based off of people and vehicle activity. And there's a few other options that are built into that software as well. For this video, I would like to just do kind of a quick overview demonstration of some of the key features that you can utilize within both versions of these softwares. So again, the first thing to know is you can record up to 32 GeoVision cameras into this software. For a third-party camera, you would need a license. It is a one-time fee. And then you can also pay a one-time license to be able to bump this software up to a 64-channel platform. Now, this is the software that would reside on the server and your cameras would record to that server. And then you can, of course, display your cameras locally off of that server, which is what we're doing here on this screen. One of the key features that you can do with the VMS is you can create a layout or multiple layouts. Let's say that you want to have two monitors and be able to display maybe 16 cameras on one monitor and then another 16 cameras on another monitor. You could do that with the VMS software by creating two separate layouts for those monitors. You can also use layouts to be able to group cameras. Let's say, for example, you want all of your interior cameras on one layout and all of your exterior cameras on another layout, so you can quickly flip back and forth between those layouts. That is one of the things that you can utilize the layout option for. So how do we create a layout? The first thing you'll do is open up the content list and then bring open the layout section. Once in here, you can hit the plus sign, add, and hit add layout. You get a screen that comes up where you will want to give the layout a name. I'm just going to call this test layout. And you can choose one of the predefined options that are right here. You can also say, I wanna make it a six by six grid or a four by four or whatever. And then your last option is to hit customize. And when you hit okay on customize, this gives you the ability to actually customize how large or small your cameras will display. So to do this, you can just drag and then click the merge button in the top left, and that will now merge your cells. So let's say that you have some critical cameras that you want to display larger than others, or maybe you're using some panoramic 180 degree cameras and you wanna have a wide angle view. Uh, this really gives you the ability to customize how those cameras display in the GeoVision VMS software. Again, you can create as many layouts as you would like. And let's say that I just, create a layout like this, hit OK. And when you do that, you have a couple options that come up on the screen here. The first option that you will always see is this assign cameras to this layout automatically. If you leave that checked, it's going to go ahead and put the cameras in the windows in order of how you've added the cameras into the system. So cameras one through however many, it's just going to list them in sequential order. You can also, if you have multiple monitors plugged in, click this drop down menu and you can select which monitor you want that layout to go to. So, for our example here, I'm going to leave it set as main panel, but I'm going to uncheck this assign cameras uh, automatically because I want to show how to manually add in the cameras. So, when I hit finish, I now have my blank grid that I can work with. And if I want, I can collapse my layout section and now expand my camera section. Over here on the left, you now have all of your cameras listed out. And when the system was set up, if the cameras were given a name, you will see that camera name listed right here. And also when you hover over, you'll see a live preview of the camera. When you're ready to bring in a camera, you can just simply drag and drop and it will display the cameras in the layout. Now, wherever you place the cameras, it's going to go ahead and just save the cameras in that layout. And if you go back into the layout section, this is where you can actually just double click on one of your layouts and it will call up the set of cameras that you had last assigned to that layout. The EMAP feature is another option that you can utilize within the GeoVision VMS software. This allows you to upload a floor plan of your facility and display it as a channel. 
This is a very useful feature if you have a security guard that's going to be watching the cameras because it really helps to provide situational awareness of where activity is happening throughout a facility. As you see here, you have a map of the facility. You can interact with this map by clicking and dragging to look around. You can zoom in and out and you can really kind of get it positioned how you would like. The icons are laid out here on the map of where the cameras are actually located in the facility. And what will happen is when the camera senses motion, you will see a live preview of that camera pop up on the screen. And then you could just double click on that camera's field of view and it will full screen the camera for you. Once you're done, you double click again and it brings you back to the map. And then if you double click in the gray section beside the map, it will bring you back into your full layout. Now for controlling cameras, if you want to full screen a camera, you just simply double click on it. That will bring up the camera into full screen and full resolution. And then whenever you're ready to zoom on a camera, you can just scroll up with the scroll wheel on your mouse and that will initiate the digital zoom. And from there, you can drag to look around at your scene. So on all cameras that are added into the VMS software, you do have the ability to do digital pan, tilt and zoom. Nothing is moving on the camera here. This is basically just manipulating the image and enlarging it. But there are some cameras that will have a motorized lens. For example, this camera right here has a motorized lens built in. And you'll know that because if you click on the little toolbar icon down in the bottom center of the window, you will see a PTZ control icon. Now, when you do this, you get a control option down in the bottom right hand corner. And this gives you the ability to optically zoom the lens in or out and then focus the camera. This is typically done during installation and setup of the system. But if I'm to hold down the zoom in button here, as you can see, it optically zooms the camera. So the camera's lens is physically moving and then it will do an automatic focus of that camera. And then if you wanna back out the view, you can do that as well. So again, this is a feature that's typically used during installation, but if you are an end user and you see something happening, for example, out in your parking lot, you wanna maybe get a closer view of that camera's lens and get higher resolution, you can fully take advantage of the optical zoom in the camera. One thing I do recommend is when you're done to always hit the tool button and uncheck PTZ control so it does turn that feature on. Double click and you're back in your matrix view. Some of the other features that are handy here, when you hover into a camera's window, you have an instant play button. If you hit this, it will bring you into the last recorded clip from that camera. So you can hit play and you can see the last recording while your rest of your cameras are just still displaying live video. You can hit the back to live view option and now you're back in live video. Another very handy feature within the VMS software on fixed lens cameras, cameras that do not have a varifocal lens being a motorized lens, you can do what is called focus view setup. So when you're on the content list under the camera section, you can right click on a fixed lens camera and hit focus view setup. This brings up a window here where you can actually draw a box or a region of interest. You can draw multiple boxes and what this is going to give you the ability to do is have a zoomed in shot of the area that you have drawn the box around, as well as the overview shot on a separate channel. So once I draw my boxes, I hit OK. And then you'll notice on the camera section, just to the left of that camera, we now have a plus sign. We can click to expand that and we have our three focus views there. You can just simply drag and drop those focus views into their own windows here. So if you do have an important area that you want to keep a close eye on, but you want to see the entire overview shot, you still have the ability to do that with the focus view setup option. For reviewing playback footage, you want to go up to the film strip icon in the top right, which is called view log. And this gives you the ability to view one or more cameras of playback footage. And to access your cameras, you will want to go up to the toolbar and then content list. And you you can go into your layout section and you can create a layout where maybe you wanna just view one camera at a time or you wanna view four at a time, however many you wanna do, you can customize that. And the layout creation process is the exact same as we did in Live View. But once you are here, 
you can just go in and find the camera of interest, drag and drop it in. If you already have a camera that's displayed there, it's going to give you a message. Do you want to replace this camera? You can say yes. And once you do that, you have a 24 hour timeline along the bottom here. If you are recording on motion, it's going to show you tick marks where your motion activity is occurring. And if you have uh, recorded just by 24 seven recording, no motion, just standard recording all day long, it's going to just be a full bar across the bottom here. Now you'll notice that there are two timeline bars, a top and a bottom bar. If you look over to the left, what this means is if you have a multi-channel division, the top bar is going to indicate motion events just for the camera that you have clicked on. Whereas the bottom bar is saying one or more cameras in your layout have motion. So I'll bring up a quad view to illustrate this a little bit better. So now I have four cameras brought in. And if you see the top bar here shows I have motion events for the camera that I've clicked on, which is labeled the front door and demo camera. Now, there are some gaps here where we still have red along the bottom, and that's saying at least one other camera in the layout has motion footage, motion recording at that moment in time. So it's just a way to identify which camera or camera has got recording throughout the day. Now, let's say that you are just interested in a one hour chunk of video and you want to just review video for that period of time. You can put your mouse on the timeline between those two hours and then scroll up with the scroll wheel. And it will now break you down into a minute view of that hour. So you can see here we're between the 12 and 1300 hours on our timeline. And if you hover over, it's going to show you a live preview of what was going on on that camera. As you can see, we have a little thumbnail that pops up there. I can then click and it will sync up any cameras that got recorded footage at that time. And in the bottom left, we can hit play and play those all synced up together. Now you still have control of your video. You can double click to be able to full screen a camera. You can scroll up to be able to zoom and look around at your camera's field of view. And then of course you just double click again to go back to your full matrix view. Now, if you're interested in going to a different date, down here in the bottom left, you have a calendar icon you can click on and it will bring up any days that are in blue are days that you have recorded footage. You can hit the back button right here to go back a month. And obviously the farthest that you have back in blue is the farthest back that you have recorded. And if you want to view footage from that day, you can just simply double click on that day and it will show you the recorded footage just from that day. And then again, to review the footage, we do the exact same process where you would just click a moment on the timeline it's going to bring in your cameras and then you can hit play to play back that footage. Now, as far as saving video, let's say that you have found the clip that you're interested in and you wanna save it. You can position your cursor at the beginning of the clip on the timeline, right click, hold and drag, and you'll notice that it highlights that time frame. Once you get about to the end of the section that you want to back up, you can release your right click and you have a menu that comes up. There are two options for backing up footage. There's backup and save as AVI. Each of them has their own advantages and disadvantages. For backup, it's the quickest option. It will save the video in the fastest format, but it will also save a copy of the GeoVision player so you can play it back on any PC and you'll have full control over the video. What that means is you'll be able to still full screen a camera and be able to zoom. Now, the other option is save as AVI. This takes a little bit longer because it's converting the video footage into another file format, but the advantage of it is you can play it in a Windows Media Player. So you don't necessarily have to have a GeoVision player, it can play it in a Windows Media Player. But if you click backup, you'll have a screen that comes up here. By default, all of your cameras will be checked. You will want to uncheck the ones that you are not interested in. So let's say, for example, I just want to do these two cameras. You can edit your time frame right here if you would like. You can then hit OK. And you will want to tell it where you want to save the footage. So you'll click right here in the bubble using hard disk. And then you'll click the three dot icon and you'll navigate to where you want to save that footage. Let's say I want to go to the desktop with it. I'll just click that, hit OK. I'm going to name this folder test video. 
Right here, you can see by default, it's already included a copy of our player. So you will be able to execute it in our player. And then you can hit OK. And it's going to start backing up our footage. You'll want to let this fully go. And you do not want to hit cancel or close out of the software or anything. You do want to just let this do its thing. So you can see here, we are now completed. We can hit OK. And now our folder will be on the desktop. Alternatively, you can right click, highlight, and choose the Save as AVI option. And you'll get a different menu that comes up here. In this menu, you can see all my cameras are side by side. So when you export it and you view it back in a Windows Media Player, it's going to appear exactly like you see here, where there will be a gray zone in the spot that you did not have a camera dragged in. So it'll look exactly like the matrix behind here. What you need to do on this window is hit the wrench and screwdriver icon. And then on this section, you need to tell it where you want to save the footage right here under set location. So you'll click the three dot icon. And again, let's say we want to go to the desktop with it. We want to give it a name. I'm going to call it test clip one. Hit save. And one thing that is very important is down on the bottom here where it says codec selection. You will click the drop down and select WMV9. This gives you the ability to play back this video in a Windows Media Player. Once you're done with that, you can close that window, and then you would hit this Start button right here, and it's going to start to back up the footage. Now, again, depending on how long of a clip you're trying to back up, this could take a little bit of time, so you do want to let it just run through and do its thing. And then once it's done, you will be able to click on the Play button, and it will take you directly into playing that clip. This has been a quick overview tutorial video of the GeoVision BMS software. For further information on our product line, please check us out at www.geovision.com.tw/us. Thanks a lot for watching.